Hello again, it's Austin from Contrarian Computing. I'm working on a series of articles about how to get into the late 90s, early aughts period of uh, retro PC gaming without either going insane or going completely broke. Uh, and one of the important things to keep in mind here is that if you're looking for specific components and you're searching for them by name on eBay, you're likely to spend a whole bunch of money because if you just put in, you know, 1.4 gigahertz Pentium 3 Tualatine or you put in Voodoo 5 5500 uh, in search and then pick the buy it now uh, auctions that are available, uh, you're going to pay hundreds of dollars uh, and it's going to be a very expensive hobby. Uh, the best way to pick up these components is to find them at recyclers uh, and recycling events for free uh, to find them uh, through local connections on, on Craigslist. But if you are looking, if you live in an area where these sorts of things aren't readily available, you might be best looking on eBay. And one strategy for finding reasonably priced things from this period on eBay is actually to look at scrap auctions. So we're going to do that today and see if we can pick out some interesting things uh, from uh, amidst the piles of debris that have uh, accumulated on eBay. Um, while we're doing this, why don't we listen to some uh, nice music uh, by Night Radio, that is the... Uh, Gnome is SoundCloud of uh, Alexander Zolotov, the creator of the Sunvox synthesizer. Uh, he has a new track called Signs of Night. We'll listen to that and some other things while we are looking around here. So let us start. So the um, search term I'm going to use here is computer scrap. Um, this is more of a catch all than you can also, I mean, you can search for. You know, graphics card scrap or video card scrap. Um, haha. And we will do some newly listed. You can do graphics card scrap. Um, for instance, we'll look at this. But it's going to weed out a lot of things that are poorly identified. And the stuff that's poorly identified, that's the stuff that's going to actually, uh, you know, be uh, uh, more likely to give you a bargain in terms of. Uh, finding something that slipped through the cracks. Um, so again, this is what video card scrap looks like. I've already sort of been through some of these earlier today, but we'll go through a few quickly. Uh, this, for instance. You can see sometimes it's not a great deal, um, but let's just do our computer scrap search. Okay, so here we have 99 cent auction, reasonable shipping priority mail, uh, 11 pounds of, could be anything, but I'm, I'm seeing a sound card in here. I'm seeing a motherboard back there. Um, none of it appears to be in terrible condition. We'll take a closer look at it. Let's just open some tabs. Um, you can find these beautiful gold bars made from the, the pens of deceased Pentium Pros and such things. Uh, I don't recommend actually buying these things for gold scrap purposes, especially edge connectors. There's a very, very thin electroplating of gold on those edge connectors just to prevent corrosion. It's not a, it's not a huge amount of pure gold. Um, so don't do that. Anyway, it's much more fun to play Unreal Tournament on these things than to turn them into a bar of impure metal. Um, if you want to buy RAM cheap, sometimes buying by the pound is a good way. This is not a great auction at 349 but... Yeah, here's another pile of things. I think we've already got this one open in one of our tabs. Yeah, so like these, is, this is just the edge connectors that are actually been cut off of boards. And some slightly better priced RAM. I see something in here that looks very much like a Sound Blaster live card. So I know that the vintage here is correct for what I'm looking for late 2000s. Uh, sorry, late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, we can open this one as well. Yeah, this one. And yeah, we're seeing more grams of gold. Usually the memory auctions are a lot cheaper, but you've this stuff's being posted every hour, so you really have to stay on top of it if you want to swoop in on something. I have found a Voodoo 5 5500 AGP in decent condition uh, listed as scrap and under a pile of other things. Um, 
a voodoo card or something like that's a big score because they're very expensive if you buy them individually. Well, let's see. All right, going right on down. See, this is not a well-priced auction, but I see something right here. I can see the NVIDIA logo. I know it's a AGP card of some sort, probably low end, but it's worth checking out. Uh, a whole bunch of motherboards. It's a cheap price for a motherboard, so you can take a look at it. Yeah, motherboards go for like nothing uh, very frequently. Scrap computer boards, uh, some IDE interface, CD and DVD cards in here, CD and DVD drives as well. And there are those, oh, what happened to this Pentium Pro? Eaten by a shark. Okay, anyway, let's, <laughs> that's a lot of stuff. But let's pop into uh, some of these auctions and see if we can try to identify some desirable components and see if they're worth our dollars. This looks interesting too. Okay. So this is an end on shot. We can't really see a lot, but we do see some thermal solutions. These do very much look like graphics cards. Here we can see they are. So there's a G4 6800, I believe, missing its heatsink. Uh, could very easily be damaged in transit. Uh, and it's PCIe interface, so it's a little bit later than what I'm looking for. Really interested in some HP cards. You see some PCI cards here. Low profile stuff. There's a GeForce 2 MX hanging out down here on the bottom. Now is $43 a good price to pick up a, a potentially broken GeForce 6800 and ATI all in Wonder card? And eh, it's questionable. Questionable the value proposition here, but you can see we can identify a lot of this stuff. So here's another bin of parts. We're going to look here, trying to scan. We see names like Connexent, probably going to be a modem. We see some things that look like sound cards. And this, you know, compact riser board here. It's really interesting. Compact spared no expense on this. Look at all those tantalum capacitors. Uh, Sparing no expense in compact, not two things I typically associate with each other, but there you go. And some all-in-one solution. Graphics. Modules. Not seeing a whole lot here that strikes me as being of the period I'm interested in. Moving right along, you have 10 pounds, 8 ounces, 80, 38 pieces of video card gold. Scrap recovery. So there's a... You can tell right away from the fact this is an AGP Pro card that has an additional uh, um, connector forward of it that this is uh, for a Power Macintosh uh, G4 with an ADC connector. You can also see uh, Apple... Uh, had a single connection solution for their monitors so that the graphics card actually power the LCD monitor. That was very cool. Um, we see on top of that we have uh, a very nicely produced, again, a lot of use of tantalum capacitors, uh, ATI Rage card of some description. Rage Pro Turbo, maybe. There's an All in Wonder card. This dual. You can see this dual um, VGA board here with those long extending connectors. You can see the blue plastic of that connector extending far onto the board that very much reminiscent of uh, Matrox G400, G450 um, series cards. So this is very much the era we're looking for. And all these seem to be in mostly good condition. There's some kind of scraped up capacitors here on what looks to be a Perhaps Dell OEM GeForce 4 MX card. Maybe we can get some better pictures. So this is an NVIDIA board. AGP. 
It's got both of the, it's universal, so it's very likely a GeForce 4 MX with a 64-bit memory interface. Uh, moving up here, I'm not really sure, but there's a diamond, there's a diamond card right behind this, I think says 1998. That's very likely to be a Diamond Viper V550 TNT board uh, with the that connector at the top that I believe is to connect uh, an MPEG decoder board to. Yeah, let's find some more, some more songs that I like here. Well, some some Mister and Mystery and Wonder while we're looking at this. So I'm thinking that's maybe a TNT card back there. Currently at twenty four ninety nine with one bit or eleven watchers. Some some other people are wise to what's going on here. How much time do we have left on this? That's in Wahiawa. Oh. One day. Uh, I believe this is a early Quadro card. It looks, f there are a lot of FX series stuff that looks like this with the, the cooling solution, but I think this might be Quadro 2. It's not a bad card. Um, this again, this looks like a, to me, because it has the DVI connector, the SV S-Video, the VGA. Um, only half the RAM is filled out. Uh, this looks like a, GeForce 4 MX Dell OEM type card, like the 8X AGP version, which is not a bad card, um, If depending on what you're trying to do, right? If you're not going for maximum 3D frame rates in, in Windows XP, but you're trying to play Windows 98 games, and you're trying to maybe get some DOS gaming in there as well, everything that NVIDIA made between the, the Reva 128 and the end of the GeForce FX series has exceptional DOS performance, especially when you're talking about um, later DOS games that make use of VESA resolutions. They have an excellent VESA implementation. So if you want to play Quake, the DOS version of Quake with 640 by 480 software rendering, or you want to play Duke Nukem 3D in high resolution, pretty much any AGP NVIDIA card uh, up to um, the end of the FX series is going to be great there. Now there's some some interesting things in here. Okay, here's a, obviously a Quadro FX card. We can read it right off the uh, right off the heatsink fan. And then this is I don't know what it says under there, but it looks metroxy to me. Okay, here we have a actively cooled ATI graphics chip. Was that ATI Rage Theater? It says so. Uh, this is. Is it a pre, pre all in wonder, ATI Rage card? Okay, yeah, you can clearly read Matrox off of the bottom right here of this thing. So, it looks. I you mean, know, we can we can we can go into eBay. I'm sorry, we can go into Google Image Search now, and we can search for the particular card if we're looking, you know, specifically for a G400 Max, or if we're looking something else to try to match that up but obviously match rocks obviously period um there's that pro card oh this is another higher end i think they had some 9600 xts and stuff uh at that time on the as an option on the power mac g4 so this is another uh g4 card with the adc connector and what's this guy in the right here Uh, if only I could read that text, it's a little too blurry, but it does look interesting. Then another, okay, this is, there's a lot of Macintosh stuff here. Okay, we're getting a good look at this Diamond card. Now Diamond also did have a, a number of uh, Savage, S3 Savage base cards. I think um, this just has that one tantalum off in the right rather than the two astride the claw, uh, astride that crystal um, to the bottom left of the heat sink and this, this upper left thing. So I'm thinking this is a Diamond Viper V550 TNT also based on the year. You can take a quick look. Yeah, it looks a lot like it, doesn't it? This memory layout. That one tantalum capacitor there. 
They think this. This time if I have a V550, the 9098 date on there. Look like this? Looks like it to me. So. Yeah, we have the Atmel logic. Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's what it looks like. So. If you just search for if we were, if we just go on eBay here and we do a search for let's say we want a Diamond Viper V550 right because it was a uh, TNT is a it's a historically interesting card. Um, what can get this is a bid starting at five, starting at ten, going pretty cheap. The first buy it now I see is. This is only, you can see though, this one doesn't have all the memory. This is only eight megs, 16 megs, 14. There's a buy it now here for 36.99. They're getting more expensive <laughs> as we scroll down here. Uh, but you know, over on this auction here, you're looking at 24.99 and that's one of many, many cards that you could experiment with and have fun with. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on here. I don't recognize that black one, but that might be interesting. Um, does that say Rage Pro Turbo AGP? Probably. And we see the backside of the AGP cards. Anyway, we shouldn't get too bogged down, but you know, there, we're seeing some interesting things here from the period. Um, So it might be worth it. Do I see something really interesting to me, like a Voodoo card? Okay, we can see it's Rage Pro Turbo. Okay, obviously the Pro Turbo does not have a really great reputation. <laughs> that was when uh, ATI decided they wanted to market to enthusiasts. The the performance of the normal Rage card was uh, Rage Pro was disappointing, and so they added the word Turbo to it, and then they shipped a, a driver for it that improved benchmarks while actually hampering in-game performance and got a lot of well-deserved criticism for that. Uh, but uh, ATI cards do have a lot of versatility in a retro gaming rig, and I'm nostalgic for them because I've had probably a million of them throughout the years. But anyway, something to keep an eye on. Uh, 18 graphics cards, but they're not really the period I'm interested in. We're seeing a lot of PCI Express, and I've got PCI Express cards that will blow these things away, so... All right, 11 pounds of retro computing pleasure. We have a land grid array of some sort here. I don't know what that board is. Sys board, weird. Is that? Okay. I was gonna say, is that EGP with a land grid array? I'm not quite sure what we're talking about here in a micro ATX board. Well, there is definitely a sound blaster card of some description. It says MU 10K1, so it should be a live card, but I don't know what's going on. Ooh, some bad things have happened to some of its audio checks. That's something you want to definitely look out for. Well, this is blurry. That's that's what this is. This is blurry. It's going to be hard to pick out some individual components. That is a graphics card. Not sure what. If we get a little closer. Ah, an Alienware front panel board battery. I don't know what's going on. Interesting though. Uh, here's that sys board that I'm, I'm interested in. Yeah, AGP with some sort of Langrid array processor here. It definitely. Not what I'd be calling high end. Uh, oh, what is this? Nvidia GeForce something? Oh, better. Okay, GeForce 4. MX440 by Asus. Uh, not high end, but a lot of versatility and 
is it worth 99 cents? Even if it has a 64-bit memory interface, it would still be worth 99 cents. Now, the question is, do you want to pay the shipping for all this other stuff, most of which you don't want? It's not like a big bin of fun, necessarily, like with that last auction. This looks like a, a big bin of weird and OEM. It's a... Oh, yeah, motherboard of some description. At least has an Intel chipset. Oh, it's an Xbox 360. <laughs> well, that's cool. Not what I wanted, but it's cool. Okay, anyway. Moving right along, three and a half pounds. Not a particularly sharp picture. See if we get any close-ups of things that are more interesting. Eh, not really. Okay, 10 pounds of PCI cards, it says here. 24.99. Six watchers, so some other people onto this. There's probably something in here of interest. The backside of this looks very much like a Sound Blaster Live value card. I don't see a digital audio connector on there, but I also find five toes and a standard configuration. So this is, there's something here that looks very much like a, like a, like an old Hophog uh, video capture card for PCI. And then some interesting looking top feature connector, probably the period I'm interested in graphics card that I can't quite see. And another graphics card I can't quite see behind it, and then a SCSI card, and then a graphics card that's completely sandwiched uh, between it and the other SCSI card. So it's a, it's a bit of a tease. I can't really figure out what's going on there. So you look at this, and there's, I see Compact there, but this is an AGP connector with both notches. It's looking fairly long. Inspected by AR. What do we have here? We have uh, we have places for VGA, S video, and DVI, but only VGA is actually soldered in. A lot of componentry, a lot of discrete componentry on the back of this board, more than I would expect for a real like low end budget board or a you know like a GeForce MX type board. And also this something else here. This is interesting, but you see, we're not getting the we're not getting the side of this that would help us to identify it. Now we see an NVIDIA Vanta card there, so that's a TNT card, NVIDIA TNT with a 64-bit memory interface. And we see this is quite interesting, an Oriel Vortex card. That's a great sound card. Um, has its own A3D API, is supported in a number of games. Uh, I think early versions of Doom 3. Um, totally worth exploring. So there's a lot of interesting stuff in the vintage. It's just, it's a bit of a risk here. And you, there's some other bidders looking. I mean, if you're if you're trying to get an Oriel Vortex 2, how much would it cost you? You just type in Oriel Vortex 2. So Vortex 1, is, is this more likely to be a Vortex 1? Yeah, that's what it's looking like. So, Oriel Vortex card, 35 bucks from Russia. Okay, well, you're already doing better at 24.99, and there's some other interesting stuff in here. So, this is the sort of auction that might be of interest. Um, what do we have here? Seven pounds. Seven pounds of OEM motherboard goodness. We have a socket for 78 Pentium 4 board here with an AGP connector. And micro ATX format with four PCI slots, but it's probably not a high end board because we only have two DIMM slots. So, 800 series something. Um, not a lot going on in the VRMs here, except for three obviously bulging capacitors. Not surprising. Dell actually didn't cheap out too much on, on capacitors. It's really the enthusiast boards from the early aughts where things look really bad. Uh, and it's those larger capacitors there, probably Nishikans. They're probably going to last for some time, but not unsurprisingly, these 
these uh, caps here, they may have gotten some slightly cheaper ones and they have suffered from the capacitor plague, but that that's not a great reason to, to throw out a board like this. Uh, it's very simple to replace those capacitors. You can affordably do it. Um, so don't, don't turn your nose up at something just because it's got a, uh, a few bulging caps. And we can look this up, this E210882. Now, sometimes those numbers actually, those OEM numbers are not unique. E, what did I say it was? E210882. Whoops, 88. So yeah, yeah. Ser several numbers are not indicative of board model. Yeah, this doesn't have anything to do with it. This is a regulatory stamp. That's another cheap way to find things. Search for the regulatory number. People confuse it for the serial number. Uh, D33011 is a regulatory number that appears on a lot of Radeon 9700 graphics cards. That's a favorite search of mine. We could do it now just for joke. And you'll find, hey, what's this? It's a Radeon graphics card. It's only 3499. Now this is a, this is going to be a, almost certainly a 9700. Not getting a lot off the back right now, but um, that that's typically what these are, OEM ones. Um, and this one looks like it's in good shape. Now this is $34.99 by now. There's another one for $29, right? If you search for, uh, say we did a $9,700. Oh, look, the prices are a lot higher when you search for it by name. Anyway, D33011. Gotten a few that way, but. Uh, we don't know what this is, but it's probably a fairly modest penny of four or I don't know, I was going to say 45, but it might not even be. Um, moving right along. 14 pounds, six ounces of scrap computer interface cards for gold recovery. Uh, we see what appear to be network interfaces and then some PCI Express graphics cards under there and maybe something that's not quite PCI Express kind of poking out, but don't have a good view of it here. Um, some more things that look like graphics cards over there. Unfortunately, this is one of those cases where the interesting stuff seems to have sunk to the bottom. Uh, and it's hard to say what you're bidding on. Most of the time, there's no description. So, not, it's not surprising. Uh, we see this is advertised as 15 pounds hard drive logic circuit boards, RAM. As you see poking out here in the corner, there's a GeForce 2 MX. Uh, my target price for a GeForce 2 MX, you know, flexible retro card that it is, is probably 99 cents. So if there's nothing else in here that's of interest, then not really interested in this auction. I see, what's there, an S3 Trio somewhere here? An S3 Trio 64 again. Uh, highly compatible DOS uh, card for DOS gaming, but definitely not worth the price of entry here. Uh, this is probably another SIG. Is this is some sort of graphics card. I don't recognize. It doesn't look very high end, I'll tell you that, but it is interesting. Now, down here we have a uh, copyright creative technology 2002 Sound Blaster card of some variety. Um, and. Connexent likely modem. So there's some things here that might be from the era, but you know there'd have to be a whole lot. I'd, I'd want a, a buried voodoo card here to justify <coughs> the the asking price. You know, this is another. Hmm, <laughs> this is interesting. We have a huge close-up of this AGP card. Whatever it is, MS eight eight. Two, six. Let's just look at MS8826. What could it be? Again, might not be uh, uh, GeForce 2 X400. Is it the same card from earlier, just in a different orientation? Possibly. Well, I'm not jumping out of my chair yet. Not for the uh, 
asking price here. I occasionally do jump out of my chair. If I see a Voodoo 5, I jump out of my chair. Uh, 22 pounds motherboards and computer scrap. Oh, well, they are all some very, very sad looking little motherboards. I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think I'd want to go through the trouble of restoring those. Some LGA boards, of some sort of LGA boards, PCI Express, and a little bit later vintage than really what I'm looking for. And the motherboard is the one place not to scrimp. The motherboard is the foundation of a solid build. If it's old, something Intel, something that has a lot of high-end componentry, tantalum capacitors in place of uh, surface-mounted uh, electrolytic capacitors wherever possible. And you'll see that on a lot of old Intel boards. They really built them to last. Uh, I don't see a whole lot here that's very attractive. 10 pounds, 8 ounces, 38 pieces, computer, video card, gold scrap recovery. Did we already look at this one? It looks familiar. Yeah, I think I talked about the showed up in another search, but yeah, there's the Matrix card. A very high end construction range for a turbo for whatever reason. And uh, that's it for this time. So we found a few things that might be worth uh, putting in a bid for. It could give you a, a nice, uh, you know, trove of, of interesting cards to experiment with uh, which is really what makes this hobby fun uh so we'll do this again next week so we find the other cool things anyway austin from contrarian computing signing off have a good one